Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Ian the Reader and welcome to the channel Ian the Reader. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about the 15 things that I completed reading in the month of June. Why did I say that so weird? I don't know. Yeah, it was a great month in June. I had such a good reading time. If you've already watched my top 10 books of the year so far, you'll know that June was a stacked month for me. I think half of my favorite books of the year so far I read in June, which is absolutely crazy. Before we get into the books that I read in June though, it is time to announce the three winners of my 1000 subscriber giveaway. So thank you so much to everyone who entered. If you didn't win, I'm so sorry, but better luck next time because there will be more giveaways in the future coming from mine and my wife's bookshop, Ingle Nook Books. And if you're interested in buying any of the products, you can definitely find a link down below to our shop on TikTok and Etsy where we sell uh, Blind Date with the Books. Uh, themed book boxes like Dark Academia, Enchanted Fairy Tale, Light Academia, and all sorts of other goodies that'll be coming very, very soon. So thank you so much to everyone who entered the giveaway. And like I said, uh, order yours down below if you didn't win. But without any further ado, let's catch the video of me revealing the winners. The first place winner gets to choose one of our book boxes to receive in the mail. Those are the Dark Academia, Light Academia, or Enchanted Fairy Tale box. And the winner is Heather's Books. Congratulations, Heather. The second place winner will receive two Blind Date with a Book packages. The winner for this prize is the Chapter Conundrum. Congratulations. And the third place winner will receive one Blind Date with a Book package. The third place winner is Susan Boyd. Congratulations. Congratulations to all three of the winners. I hope that you end up loving your bookish goodies. I'm gonna tag all of you in the description of this video as well as leave my email address. Please reach out to me there so that I can get your shipping address as well as your genre preferences for your prizes. Like I said, if any of you who did not win are interested in ordering from our shop though, we would love to have you. And I'll leave links down below to our Ingle Nook, TikTok and Etsy shops. Go look at those. Cool, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the 15 books that I read in the month of June. We're gonna start off with the books that already have video reviews, starting with the three books by Lucy Foley that I read for my Lucy Foley thriller ranking and review video. That is a mouthful, but there's a link down below if you wanna watch that. The three books that I read by Lucy Foley though were The Hunting Party, The Paris Apartment, and her brand new book that just came out last month, The Midnight Feast. I had mixed feelings about these as a whole. My favorite of the books that I read by her uh, this month was The Midnight Feast though. That one was really quite good. It's probably my favorite new thriller that I've read this year. I've read quite a few like backlist thrillers that I hadn't gotten to yet, but of all the 2024 released thrillers that I've read thus far, I think The Midnight, Midnight Feast is my favorite. Um, as far as the other two books, I had somewhat mixed feelings about The Paris Apartment and I really didn't like The Hunting Party. So I'll go ahead and let you check out my video down below though if you want my more in-depth thoughts on each of these books as well as her other thriller, The Guest List, and for you to see my actual ranking of all four books. But yes, I did have a pretty good time with these thrillers overall and I really did enjoy The Midnight Feast quite a bit. Next, let's talk about two books that I read and I reviewed the second book as well as some of my thoughts on the first book, but I actually do have reviews for both books independently as well that you can check out. Those books are In the Hills Above the Grist Mill and its sequel that just came out last month, In the Grave Where the Bones Are Still Wet. I read In the Hills Above the Grist Mill for the first time back in, I want to say, 2022. I think it's been two years at this point. Um, and the author announced uh, the second book coming out soon. And so I reached out to the guy, Calvin Ellis. He's really nice. And I asked for an advanced reader copy and he sent a file of that over to me. And so I read it really quick and I loved it. Now I did reread the first book before jumping into this. Um, and I enjoyed that experience quite a bit because it just reminded me of all the characters and things. And I will say I liked the first book quite a bit, but the second book is like incredible, absolutely so good. Uh, really, really fantastic. One of the best horror books I've read all year and it did make my top 10 of the year thus far. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that video down below as well as a link to purchase the first book in the series in the hills above the grist mill down below on Amazon. Uh, please check this book out guys. If you love horror, if you love mystery books, if you love great characters, uh, great action and pacing, you gotta check this out. It follows Paisley Mott who is a supernatural vlogger. She goes and investigates like possibly supernatural situations uh, across the country and vlogs it and it is just so good. The first book is very mystery heavy with a little bit of horror and the second book is very horror heavy with a little bit of mystery. So I love these books, really recommend them and you should definitely check out Calvin Ellis's books. They're 
top notch. Okay, so that takes care of the books that already have video reviews out. Now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the rest of the books that I read this month, which like I said, are quite a few. I read 15 in total, so I've got 10 more books to talk about. Let's jump into it. Let's go ahead and talk about my favorite book of the year so far. If you've already watched my top 10 books of 2024 so far, you know what this is. I think I'm going to have to film a video review of this book at some point because I just have a lot of thoughts that I need to get out there. But I'll, I'll say a little bit right now. That book is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock and just, ugh. I, th I keep thinking about this book, you guys. I do. It's been another week since I filmed that previous video I talked about it in, and I still think about it every day, and I don't know what to do about it. This book is brilliant, in my personal opinion. Uh, it is a southern gothic thriller horror book in which we follow a variety of different characters over quite a bit of time. We follow three different plot points in this story. The first of those is Arvin, who's a young boy at the start of the book whose mother has gotten sick, and it deals with him and his parents, and then it comes back to him years later when he's like 18. I believe. He's the first plot line. Then we have another one in which we follow this like radical, crazy out there preacher guy um, who thinks that he can just perform all these miracles and things like that. And he gets himself into some trouble. Um, and that's one storyline as well. And then we follow a couple who are traveling serial killers. And they each have their own stories that kind of interconnect at little points at the start. And then eventually come to this huge culmination at the end of the book and it was it was just so good it was so good and I have so many thoughts on like the themes and the characters and things like that I will have to make another video at some point talking about that but just not for now this is a dark gritty disgusting at times book full of some pretty awful people but some good ones too um and overall while it is pretty upsetting to read there were just some brilliant moments in this book and I absolutely adored it not for the light of heart or the light of stomach but so good, five stars, the best book I've read all year. Next up is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I already talked about this book quite a bit in my top 10 of the year so far as well. It's good, I liked it a lot, very charming. If you've read, if you've watched the movie, it's pretty faithfully adapted in that and so you're gonna get a lot of what you got there except you do get a little bit more background on some of the other characters like Inigo and Fezzik um, and just a little bit more backstory as well as a different approach to the narration of this book um, and I, I loved it. It was a lot of fun, so charming, such a delightful read. I can definitely see myself returning to this in the future and I really want to rewatch the movie now. It's been like probably a decade since I watched the movie but uh, the book was wonderful. Highly recommend. I also I read The Will of the Many by James Islington. This is really quite good. I wouldn't say that I thought it was as amazing as everyone else told me it was. Like, I feel like I've seen so many reviews that are like, oh my gosh, this is the best start to a fantasy series I've ever read. And like, oh my gosh, this is the best fantasy series or book I've read in years and things like that. And while I thought it was amazing and I do want to reread it to get more of what happened there and to just fully immerse myself a little bit more, um, it was really good. It was not the best fantasy book ever. Um, so yeah, I liked it a lot. It is kind of like fantasy Red Rising with a little bit more grit, a little bit more complexity. It's not like YA-ish, even though the main character, I do believe he's like 17, um, but it doesn't feel YA. This does feel quite adult. Um, and I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, four and a half stars. I also read We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. This is another one that made an appearance in my top 10. Have we talked about all the books that have appeared in my top 10? I think so. In the Grave Where the Bones Are Still Wet, The Will of the Many, The Devil All the Time, We Begin at the End, The Princess Bride. So this is the last one that appeared in my top 10. But like, seriously guys, the fact that five books from my top 10 were read in the month of June is just like, insane. But anyway, We Begin at the End is a coming of age story slash mystery story uh, following some really heartfelt characters with some really weird names like Duchess and Star and Walk and Dark. And yeah, there's some point there I'm missing. But I really enjoyed this book quite a bit. Chris Whitaker has been getting a lot of attention for his latest book that just came out. And you don't want to miss this one if you like that one. Or if you just like mystery thrillers with a lot of heart to them, I highly recommend picking this up. It's not too long and it's quite immersive. I really enjoyed myself with We Begin at the End. I also continued my reread of Stormlight Archive with the words of Radiance, not the words of Radiance, you dummy, words of Radiance. I did continue my reread of that series with this book and ah, uh, it was so good. It was really dang good. I, I, I love this series so much and hopefully my reread continues to go well. I do remember I gave the first two books five stars upon reading them, but then I didn't read Oathringer book three for like three years. And then I just read it after having 
really forgotten quite a bit of the first two books and so I didn't enjoy it quite as much and I gave it like a 4.5. I'm hopeful that I end up enjoying Oathbringer more upon reread and then I'll read Rhythm of War for the first time soon as well. So this is very exciting for me. I cannot wait to get caught up on the series in time for book five, Wind and Truth, that comes out in December. I'm on track to do so. I've got to read uh, Edge Dancer this month, then Oathbringer, then Dawn Shard, then Rhythm of War, and there we have it. Uh, so yeah, I loved this. I will say, Words of Radiance, while I still think I loved it as much this time as the first time, I like Way of Kings more now, which I did not expect because Words of Radiance was my favorite before, but Way of Kings, there's just something about it. There's something about Bridge Four. There's something about being introduced to the characters, getting so much of Kaladin's perspective and his backstory. And yeah, the, the first book is my favorite as of right now. We'll see if Oathbringer or Rhythm of War can beat it though. Here's open. Okay, I also read The Kept Woman by Karen Slaughter. This is book, I don't know, eight maybe of the Will Trent series, which are a super fun and gritty uh, detective story. I say it's detective. He's part of the GBI, the Georgia Bureau of, Inve of Investigation. So it's like the Georgia version of the FBI. Um, but he's a detective in Atlanta, Georgia. And, um, oh, he's a special agent. He's not a detective. Special Agent Will Trent. Um, but yeah, I, I've enjoyed this series quite a bit. I will say there's one thing that bothered me about this book, and that's that there's this certain relationship kind of at the heart of the series. And Karen Slaughter just does this thing. She did it in her Grant County series as well, where, like, she just won't let them, like, get along. You know, it's got to be like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I can trust this person da, 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 for, like, five books when, like, just trust each other already. I don't want to keep going through this. So I'm sure I will in the next book and I, I'll get over it. Maybe it's just because I read, like, three or four of these in pretty close proximity to each other, but I was just kind of annoyed to the point that I actually like read the first bit of this and then I put it aside. And then towards the end of the month, I was like, well, I guess I should probably finish this. So I did and I liked it. It was good, but that annoyed me. So we'll see how I feel about the next book, which I think is called The Last Widow. I don't, I don't know. The, the names all blend together for me with this series, but I still have a really good time with it. So Hopefully the next book is better. I also buddy read, quote unquote, uh, I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga with Jake from The Bookish Drummer. I say that because we agreed to buddy read it and that was like at 6 p.m. And then by like 11 o'clock in the afternoon the next day, I'd already finished it and he hadn't even started it yet. So, oops, sorry, <laughs> but I, I liked this. Uh, I Hunt Killers is a reread for me. It's the first time Jake is reading it, um, but I had a good time with this. This is about a guy, a teenager named Jasper Dent, whose father was a notorious serial killer. Serial killer. He was a notorious serial killer. It's very serious. Um, and now his father has been arrested and people kind of are looking at him like, oh my gosh, are you gonna be a serial killer too? But he doesn't wanna be. Um, but he was kind of trained by his father to be one. So there's a lot of complexity to him. Um, but this book I enjoyed. I don't think I enjoyed it nearly as much as I did when I first read it in high school. I gave it five stars back then. This time I gave it like a 3.5 or maybe like a light four. Uh, but in my memory, books two and three are significantly better than book one. So I am very excited to continue this reread. And I recommend it. If you want like a YA that's a little bit edgier, give it a try. I liked it. We got three more. Let's go ahead and knock them out. First up, I read this book called The Space Between Here and Now. And for the life of me, I can't remember what the author's name is, but it's here on the cover. Um, and this was really interesting. I read this because it was recommended by my little brother. And it is a YA book that it's about a girl living. It's, it, it's an interesting world. Um, so basically there is time travel in this world, but it's not time travel like you would expect. Essentially people can only travel back to their own memories and they cannot control it. Um, for a number of reasons. One, it's triggered by certain senses. So the main character um, is triggered by smell. If she smells certain things, then she's sent back to a memory that's associated with that smell. For other people, it's sight. For other people, it's sound, touch, yada, yada, yada. Um, but they also can't control what memory they go back to. And when they go back to those memories, uh, they can't impact anything. They can just walk around and see different perspectives of it, which is interesting, but they can't actually talk to the people there. They just kind of watch the memory. Um, but it's an interesting idea. Um, and on top of that, the main character is dealing with a lot of things. She's in high school and is terrified of just randomly being sent back in time. Because when this happens, they physically disappear. Like they disappear, go back to the memory, and then their bodies pop back into the regular time, uh, hours later typically, sometimes maybe it's minutes, but they just disappear and then they pop back into reality for however long they were gone. Um, so she's scared that's gonna happen to her and it's interfering with her relationships there. But additionally, 
her mother left uh, when she was younger and she doesn't know why or what happened between her father and her mother and she wants to know but there's a lot of trauma there and her father doesn't want to talk about it um, and she also feels this urge to be connected to her ancestry in Korea um, so there's a lot that goes on here and for a YA story I thought this was uh, really interesting I don't typically like I said read a lot of YA I say that but I also read I Hunt Killers this month so it was a weird month for that um, but I thought this was actually quite good I thought that the themes were well executed I thought the idea of travel back in time but it's uh in enacted by like your senses was really cool um just the approach to time travel i thought was very interesting so i wouldn't say that it's like a hard sci-fi book it's really more of a contemporary book with a an interesting sci-fi twist um but i i vibed with it i had a good time with this i gave it like a light four i think it was a lot of fun so if that sounds good to you go ahead and check it out i also read foster by i want to say the author's name is claire keegan this is a very short book uh it's very very short i think the audiobook was only like two hours long and it follows a girl who is living in ireland and her parents are getting ready to have another child and during that time when her parents are like having the baby and adjusting she's sent to live with a foster family of this couple that have kind of a relationship with them but kind of not she kind of feels like they're strangers um and it's interesting because it's a like a story of found family uh to somebody who already has a family and it, like they're they're not replacing them but they're kind of attaching themselves to each other and finding a certain sense of belonging and identity that none of them can find on their own. Um, it was very heartwarming and heartfelt. I had kind of high expectations because I'd read some really, really strong reviews for this. And it was just a little bit too short for me. I liked it. I just wish it had been longer. So it's like a 3.5 to a very light four, but it's good, heartwarming. If you want something really quick and to the point that'll pull on your heartstrings a little bit, check this out. And last but not least, I read Funny Story by Emily Henry. I picked this up because I wanted to read something light. I think I read it right after I read Words of Radiance, which was like stupid long. So I needed something that was just gonna be a little bit brief. And so Funny Story by Emily Henry, my hold came up from the library. I was like, yeah, this is a good time. Uh, and so I listened to that. I liked it pretty well. A lot of people are calling it Emily Henry's best. I don't think it is personally, um, but I thought it was kind of good. Uh, it, it involves like the fake dating trope that a lot of people like and i i kind of liked it i i'm never like fully on board with that just because of the whole deception thing and then on top of that it just feels a little bit ridiculous like in itself like who pretends to be dating somebody it's just over the top and feels too gimmicky uh, but the way it was executed in this book i kind of got it so we followed two characters who were in serious relationships with people the main character was engaged um, and the other guy, the guy was uh, living with his girlfriend and their significant others break up with each other and get engaged really quickly. And so the main character having nowhere else to live now that she's been kicked out of her home, moves in with this guy who now needs a roommate. Um, and through a series of circumstances, they end up pretending to be dating. And I liked it pretty well. I don't really have a lot of thoughts about this. Um, I've now read all of Emily Henry's like contemporary romance books and I keep coming back to them even though I never like have like a great time with them. So she's not my favorite romance author by any means, but I'll keep reading them. They're a good time, they're popcorn. So there you have it. That's it for this video though. Those are the 15 books that I read in the month of June. Let me know what your favorite book of the year so far is if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, here's hoping that the summer is full of other bangers like this. I cannot believe five of my top 10 books of the year were from this month. It was awesome. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.